All right, so moving on now to the, some, some cucurbit, squash, and cucumbers. Uh, has anybody grown this, trombetta or tromboncino squash? Okay, this is kind of fun. Has anybody had problems with squash vine borer in their garden when they grow? Okay, I do too. And so this particular uh, squash is, seems to be resistant, slightly resistant, <clears throat> but also such a vigorous grower that it outgrows the squash vine borer. So it may still get in there, but it just keeps growing. So this is something I highly recommend. I got my seed from Renee's Seeds. Um, and it's just called, it's, a, it's an Italian heirloom squash. So you can harvest it green and immature and eat it like zucchini, um, or you can let it uh, mature and it will just keep growing and keep growing and the skin will turn kind of a tan color. And then that's what, and then you can harvest it and, um, and save it and eat it like a winter squash. Uh, when all the seeds are down in that bulbous end, so it's really neat because you have that real, that long skinny neck that you can just, um, that's all edible. You know, you can eat it in salads, you can saute it, you can roast it. It also makes these really beautiful yellow blossoms. Um, if you're into eating squash blossoms, this is a really good plant for that. But it is a big, it is a vigorous vining plant and you do want to uh, grow it on some kind of a trellis, I think, or a fence. She's asking, what's the flavor? No, it's very mild. It just tastes kind of like, tastes kind of like zucchini. I mean, to me, zucchini and summer squash taste the same, and just kind of like that, but um, just very mild flavored. Here, you know, you can, like I said, I saute, I'll just cut it up and saute it like I would zucchini. Um, in that center picture, I was just uh, olive oil and salt and pepper, and then I was just gonna roast it in the oven. And then on that, uh, the last picture, that is actually uh, after it has uh, matured all the way and then I just uh, roasted it like butter. It is, it is a type of butternut squash. Um, it's related to butternut squash. So that's the tromboncino squash. And then uh, Suyo Long, this was one of Georgia Mary's favorite uh, cucumbers. So I have been eating and growing this one since uh, the late 1980s. Has anybody here grown it? So it's the, isn't it a really good cucumber? Those of y'all that have grown it, it's really delicious. It's you know it's mild. It's burpless if that's an issue for some people. It has doesn't have very many seeds. Um, actually, there it is when you cut it. It just has a really great flavor. It's really crisp, and they really do grow to. They'll grow longer than 15 inches, but I just recommend that you harvest them around 12 or 15 inches. If you let them keep growing, they will get kind of bulbous and seedy. Um, and I also think that when you're growing these, uh, like these Asian cucumbers, that they're not as susceptible to like cucumber beetles. So that's another good reason to grow them. Here's another one, just kind of an interesting uh, cucumber I, I've, I've grown. It's from India. It's called Punakira. It's pretty fast. It, it starts to starts to um, produce cucumbers in about 50 days. You plant it from seed directly in the soil. Of course, most on cucumbers in general, you want to plant them. I grew this one on a tomato cage, but on a trellis or an arbor or a fence because they're vining plants. This is really crisp and juicy. It's not bitter. It is a pale yellow cucumber, but if you let it ripen on the vine, it will turn russet in color and it looks just like a potato. And I understand that in some cultures they'll eat it when, they're, when it's in that, that mature stage where it looks like a potato, but I think um, I eat it when it's just yellow, just starting to turn a little bit of, like a little kind of color at the stem end. And then that's when I usually harvest it. Um, but anyway, very heat tolerant, and that's the reason I put it in here because uh, a lot of times nematodes will nematodes or heat will get my cucumbers that I'm growing into the summer. But this punakira just has done really well uh, further along into the summer. And then how about this Mexican sour gherkin? Has anybody grown this? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is something new then that y'all might want to try. I've noticed. I go to this uh, garden in uh, Austin called Sunshine Community Garden. And it is a really great, most community gardens in general are a great place to go and see a lot of different kinds of vegetables being grown because there's different, you know, ethnicities, different 
people that have different backgrounds and different food tastes, and they find a lot of interesting vegetables to grow. So I've seen this one growing there a lot. It's also called kooka melon or mouse melon. Um, so I just took this description right out of a seed catalog because I was having a hard time describe, you know, thinking of how to describe the flavor, but cucumber flavor with a tangy citrus twist. And they are only really just about the size of an olive. You want it, and you don't want them to get much bigger than that because then inside they'll just be, uh, they'll get just, you know, really seedy. But um, anyway, just harvest them when they're really small and uh, a, lot of, a lot of cultures will pickle them. They can be stir fried. You can just eat them raw like a snacking or you can put them in salads and they might look just like your little cherry tomatoes. <laughs> People may be surprised when they put a fork into it. Takes about 75 days to harvest, but they do, they kind of keep producing for a long time into the winter. I, I'm sorry, into the summer. Um, so anyway, that's a real kind of interesting and fun vegetable to grow.